that is. Okay, how do you run this procurement metrics report? Uh, I'm gonna log, I'll go ahead and log out. So if I start Chrome, and this is if you are a, you, uh, if you have a Fed Data Check account, your agency is a subscriber to Fed Data Check, you would go to www.feddatacheck.net. I'm going to log in as Interior. You would have your own account, S. Johnson at feddatacheck.net. Put in the password. Okay, so now I'm at the Fed Data Check homepage. Since I'm I logged in as an Interior member, I would click on the Interior logo. And then the report is under F data quality, FPDSNG, top X procurement metrics. Let me make that a little bigger right here. I will do it for all bureaus. You can pick just for a particular agency within Interior if you want. Exclude transaction subject to propagated values. I'm going to, let's talk about that later. Uh, I'm going to review 20 transactions per type. That's the top X. You can review the top five, and it's by obligated amount. So I'm going to review the top 20 that are negatively impacting the small business goaling rate. Let's set this for FY20. And this, uh, you'll see what this does here, that open hyperlinks in new windows. And I'm going to let that run. That's going to take, it takes a little while for this one to run. So while that's running, let's get back to this. So there are two key parameters. How many transactions would you like to review? You know, you could review the top 10 by obligated amount of, a, of transactions that are suspected should be count towards your small business goals and are not, for example. Or you can review the top 50. That's up to you. And then the, the other key question when you're running this report is whether to exclude transactions impacted by values propagating from the associated IDVs. So to, uh, the, in regards to small business, do you want to exclude delivery orders and BPA calls from your analysis? Well, why would you want to do that? Well, that's because, as you know, the contracting officer uh, determination of business size is set at the one level up at the referenced IDV level. So if you got a delivery order and you're referencing an indefinite delivery contract, uh, IDIQ, indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity type, uh, then you can't change the business size at the delivery order. You'd have to go to the IDC change it there and then that then it would flow down to the delivery order or call uh, but that's up to you uh, we make that option available to you as to whether um, you want to get involved in that the chain reaction say no i just want to look at things that i can change on the on the award in which case for small business you would restrict it to definitive contracts and purchase orders if you want to widen the scope See if an IDC, an ID, uh, indefinite delivery contract or uh, BP, uh, BPA or something else may be miscoded and is having a real big chain reaction, uh, then you can opt to not exclude those. Uh, if your agency does not subscribe to Fed Data Check, and if you would like some help on the analysis here and running this report, R Hyde at PotomacWave.com. Rachel Hyde, she's on the call. She's on this webinar now. If your agency does not subscribe to Fed Data Check and you would like us to run the report for you, uh, email Brian Yost. Okay, why are we doing this? Okay, the transactions listed in FPDSNG in the Fed Data Check Top X Procurement Metrics, Metrics Report do not represent alleged FPDSNG coding mistakes. So that's a key point here. 
So here's my here's the report that you saw me run. I'm going to click on small business awards over here. And this first one came up era helicopters. And this one I happen to I believe is coded correctly. But what we were saying is uh, that in FPDS and G, uh, the CO coded this as an other than small business award. But if I look in SAM right now, for this vendor, for this NAICS code, they're a small business. So this award just happened in September. The CO coded, uh, well, it flowed down from the IDV as an OTSB. But boy, I look in SAM right now and they are a small business. That's a nice size award too. It would be nice to get that 33 million. Let's move that over to the small business category. Well, this we are not in it by any means saying, okay, this award is coded wrong. Someone needs to go to the IDV right now uh, with their hair on fire and change it. And the reason is, well, let's see what the reason is. We'll, let's talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, that we have had cases where these types of reports go out. Uh, they go to a COCS and the CO goes, what do you mean I'm doing it wrong? There's nothing wrong with this. They were a small business. They weren't other than small business when I at the time of award. Uh, maybe not now, but when I made it 10 months ago, you know, so. These are not mistakes. These are not data check email alerts. Uh, they're meant for informational further research purposes. Yeah, like, like, like I'm saying here, they're meant to be starting points for further investigation. Uh, based on what I've been doing this, I've been, I've been doing this a while. Um, I haven't made a d detailed empirical study of it, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna say that the small business goaling percentages reported by agencies are generally undercounted. Slightly, but they're slightly undercounted. <clears throat> the agency's reported competition rate, as we'll see, is significantly undercounted by one to five percentage points. So, you know, I, if an agency is reporting they have an 80% competition rate, I would take, I would certainly take an even money bet that it's 81% or higher if it, if everything was accurately coded in FPDS and G. The competitive one bid rate is slightly overcounted too, and overcounting is bad on a one bid rate. So there is a significant, the data quality in FBS and G negatively impacts an agency meeting its procurement metric goals based on my experience. So if you're on the borderline, particularly if you're on the borderline, I hope you give us a call and we can look through it together because you could very well change a few transactions, legitimately so, and that would enable your agency to, to hit the goal. Okay, let's take a look at this. Small business awards. Uh, per, here's the FAR, here's the key point on this, and I'm sure this is, this is nothing new to everyone on this call, on this webinar. The business size determination is based on when the vendor's offer is submitted. It's not the signed date of the award, and it's not certainly not today's date. So you have to go back in time and to make a completely definitive uh, determination, it has to be when that vendor's offer arrived in typically email now, right? Okay, uh, so what do you do with our report then? What would you do with, uh, if you look at this report, this is a delivery order or a BPA call. And this one is either a purchase order or definitive contract, because I can see there's no reference to IDV. So if it's a purchase order definitive contract uh, and, and you want to investigate whether the determination was made correctly. First thing you need to do is go to the mod zero of the award and get the sign date. Then go to SAM and check the current and historical records for the vendors, reps, and certs. And then here's the, here's the fudge factor. 
go back sometime previous to the award date and see if there's still a mismatch. And I'm, we'll, we're going to go through an actual example here next. How about if it's a delivery order BPA call? Don't go to the mod zero of the award. Go to the mod zero of the associated IDV and repeat the steps. So you go to the sign date of the mod zero of the of the referenced IDV associated IDV. Go to Sam, check the current historical records, and based on that, see if there's a mismatch. Let's take a look at one. Hey, Bob, before you move into the example, yep. we have a hand up, uh, Teresa Manovich. All right, good. This should be good because Teresa has been doing this a long time. And I cannot find, can Ter Teresa, could you unmute yourself? Boy, I cannot see her in the list. Do you see her in the list? Can you unmute her, Rachel? Oh, there, can you hear me now, Bob? I can't. Oh, hi, how are you? Good. <laughs> no, I've been really busy. I did have a question though. And, okay. and this is something, I don't know if anyone else on the phone has um, found that happens. Um, they can be small business, but it's my understanding. And because I, I log in, not under Prism, but I'm a single login. So I log in through the web. So okay. I have different rights in the FPDSNG record, but um, it's my understanding that when the CO opens the FPDSNG record in Prism, in the in the recording um, portion, that they can change that size, whether right or wrong. So I'm wondering if, like you said, some of these are being miscoded, not intentionally, but unintentionally. Okay. So has, by has default, any, yeah, okay. Right, by default, by default, it, it usually, I thought it usually went to other than small and then they changed it. Now I, I can, I, I've been working on this with a couple of the COs trying to get them to let me in on when they open their FPDS and G so I can actually see them doing it at the time. Right, you know, right. To see exactly, because that's how I figure out what can be changed on the FPDS and G and what has to actually be changed on the award itself in the you know contract writing system. So I didn't know if anyone else on the phone had that happen to them, but you know, in, in our bureau, I need every small business dollar I can get. <laughs> so um, just something I was thinking about. I didn't know if anyone else had that occurrence. Um, well, let's see. Anything, anyone else respond to Teresa there? Um, how the how this interplays with Prism? Hey, Bob. This is Mike. Can you hear me? Yep. I work at Reclamation, and we have a similar issue too. We use Prism, and by default a lot of vendors get coded as other than small and you have to make the adjustment at in our system under the vendor tab in prism if you just make the adjustment in fpds you release the award whatever it has in prism even if it's entered wrong and it says other than small it overrides the fpds entry because it's only a a one-way communication right. so there's there is the potential for us failing to get some of those dollars that really were awarded to a small business s simply because of a system issue. Wow. Hey, that's great. That's Hi, great Bob. Uh, information. Good. Hello. Hi, Bob. This is Melinda from NIH. I agree and concur with the others. We, um, our PRISM system is the same way. If it's not overridden by the buyer or the acquisition official, then it's reported incorrectly. Wow. Okay. But again, we're also finding out that some of the buyers are not checking the SAM registration for the NICS codes to confirm whether they're small or large based on the NICS that they're using for that particular award. Good segue. Agreed. <laughs> it's it's I think it's a government wide thing. I mean, we just uh, so, keep pounding yeah. it. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I always have to have prison to override it. So if it's a small business, it comes up other than small business. 
And you have okay. to be sure to check the checkbox or it will change it even if you write in small. You have to have that little checkbox checked. I know it, but, but in mine, it's grayed out. You can't make no changes. So I, have to have like, the, I have to have the PRISM help desk to fix it. It's been my experience that even, even if I do override and change it, if I go back, uh, go to home, I'm, I also work in PRISM. And I go and work on something else, I come back to the... Um, the purchase order or so forth, it changes, it reverts right back to the initial um, thing saying if it's other than small business. So even after I've done an override, it does not remain overwritten. Wow. Well, that sounds like another, uh, kind of another discussion there, uh, but uh, what, what, and I guess I was confused that you have there's a checkbox there. So if you override it, you hit a checkbox, then you at least in Prism for DOI, exactly. there's a checkbox and you have to have it checked and you have to put some kind of comments in, in there or it will not keep it. Likewise for um, FPAC, I'm, I'm with the Department of Agriculture, FPAC, mm -hmm. and we do have to check the box. But as I stated, I can leave that particular um, procurement and come back to it and it reverts and I have to constantly update it until it actually awards. It sticks. This is Lydia. I work with Fish and Wildlife and when I do that, I just change the small business, change it to small business, go back to the first page and then come back and that saves my change. Okay. So if I change it from other than small to small, and then I go back to the first page of the um, vendor information for the first tab, then come back to the second tab for verification, it keeps my change. So a few unwritten steps there to get it to take. All right. Hey, great. Well, that's. I'm pleased with this conversation. That that's this. That's great. I mean, it's not great that it's happening, but it's. Uh, I think it's very valuable. Obviously. And I never use the checkbox. I always just make the change, go back to the first page, and then come back, and it it saves my change. Sticks it. All right. Well, let's look at uh, something where something like that might not have happened, or maybe they didn't check the NAICS codes in uh, SAM properly. So here's a pretty nice award, I, I, and I pick out these departments really by random. I, I guess there's a bias of me towards the bigger departments because I get more examples. But uh, a, a nice uh, almost $2 million award, FY20, so it's going to hit the latest uh, goals, Mustang Holdings. Now, if you just look at this, Native American-owned, certified small uh, disadvantaged business, so you get SDB credit on this one. Wow, that's looking pretty good. Uh, to hit the goals, I come down here to the small business size, and we got an OTSB here. So that's this is this would be flagged in our top X procurement metrics report. So let's go out and check Sam. Grab that Duns number. Mustang Holdings. Hit view details. First thing I'll do is I'll check core data and I'll see when this record was activated. It was activated on 710. That's when it became, you know, their their certs this round became official. And if I go back to this report, 710, well, that's after this. And so maybe this isn't isn't the best one to check, but let's check it anyway. I'm gonna click on reps and certs. I'm gonna come down to small business program represent representations. And we have a split here. So they're somewhere between 1 million and 8 million in revenue. There are yes for this NAICS and there are no for this NAICS. Okay, so what NAICS are they a yes small business on? 115210. Okay, well, that's the one we got. All right, well, maybe the issue is before this award was made. So if I do this one, that would be a few months prior to when the award was made. Let me hit that one. 
and down to small business programs. Nope. There's still a yes on that. So that was uh, this thing was activated on in August. So that's you know that's five months before the the award was signed. I bet you that was the controlling one. But okay, let's be double sure. We'll go back even uh, you know almost a year. Okay, that's still a Y. So this one looks definitely looks wrong. Current, the last two, I'm going back pretty far ways before the award was signed. You know, you know, was it solicited 10 years ago? And it took, you know, I don't know. Uh, but that sure would be one to double check the contract file on. Oh, I'm sorry, too. And I actually made a mistake there. Uh, you got to go. I should have been looking at the sign date on the IDV, not this thing, not the delivery order, but yeah. Okay, so this thing was signed in November 2019. So those last two still were before it. So this one again was was uh, signed on, uh, this SAM record was updated on April 30th, and that was six months before the uh, IDV was oh, awarded. Hey, hey Bob. Yeah. Hey, sorry to, to interrupt. Can you scroll down on that um, FPDSNG and see what the IDV has for business size? Right. Well, the IDV, it should have OTSB here as well. It does. So, yeah, you can't, that's going to jam, that's going to flow down. Right. Of course, to the delivery order. So, if you change this thing, which it looks sure looks like you should, I mean, uh, we can keep going back and back and back. There's a lot of them here. What were they back in 18? Yeah, but I don't think it's going to make too much difference. Okay, back in 2018, they were that. So uh, that would. So this is really it. Would be a great example. You flip that thing justifiably to a small business. That's going to ripple through to all your delivery orders, and you're going to get credit for small business on that if you're. If you're interior. Okay. Uh, okay, now here's one actually, you know, you do have to go through the exercise of, of doing this because this one here, I checked, this was the Aero Helicopters. This was a huge award. And if you look now, they are a small business for that NAICS code. But if you check when the IDV was awarded, they were an OTSB for that NAICS code. So if I check this thing and you go back, so if you go, so Aero Helicopters back in 2016, when this I, uh, IDV was awarded, so if you look in SAM, just to, I'm belaboring the point here, I think. <clears throat> Few details, reps and certs. Okay, so you know uh, the next code here was four eight one two one one, non scheduled passenger air transit. Four eight one two one one. Okay, they are a small business now. But that IDV was awarded back in 2016. If you went back there, I forgot which one I checked. I'll just look at that one. Okay, they're not. It was that one, 481211. So there's one where, where you know, it, you might look at it and go, wow, boy, you know, they're a small business. Now, eh, go back a couple of years. They're still a small business. Well, uh, you do have to pick the right SAM record and and really go from there and, and, and think about it before you think you got you have a have a hit on this. Okay. 
Uh, so there's there's that. Uh, now here's here's something too. Obviously, uh, a vendor can be an OTSB or an SB at the same time. Potomac Wave is. So if I look for Potomac Wave and Sam. <clears throat> Search Potomac Wave Consulting, view details, reps and certs. And we just saw that one with that Mustang. You know, it depends on what we're doing. We're either a small business or not, a, or an OTSB. That's, that's, uh, everybody knows that. But what some people I think don't know is that you could be a small business or an other than small business for the same no, NAICS code at the same time. And uh, it's due to these exception strings. So if I look at, if I click on, pull up the SBA size standards and I look for 5113, NAICS code 541130, uh, come on, 541330. You could see that, um, you know, there's there's different NAICS codes. If you're doing engineering services at $20 million, and let's say you're a $20 million company, you would be a small business, uh, you would be an OTSB for en engineer, if this was the, you know, general engineering services. But if you're doing marine engineering, you would be an SB. Let's take a look at Infuse Corporation. View details, reps and certs. Five, four, one, three, three, zero. So they're not a small business uh, for general engineering services. They are a small business if they if they were doing marine engineering. Same company, same NAICS code. Maybe they're an SB, maybe they're an OTSB. So if you look at this award here, this was July 2020, an IDC, in Interfuse Corporation, they're coded as an SB for 541330. It didn't come up. Come on. Okay. Uh, and then let's look at at this IDC. It's awarded by Federal Acquisition Service. So these are both awarded. At uh, just about the same time, this one was awarded in July. This one was awarded in September. Both of these are after the latest SAM record, and they're an OTSB on this one for the same NAICS code. Which one is right? Interfuse, pretty much the same day, date, 541330, OTSB. Interfuse, 541330, SB. The answer is they're probably both right. <clears throat> and the exception string, as you saw, that comes from how the SBA table of size standards, that's their nomenclature. They put accept. Did people see that?
That's what I'm referring to in the exception string. That's how it comes across on the database to database transfer. It says ex exception something. So it'd be, uh, it would come all across as, interviews would come across as N, Y, Y, Y. No, you know, correspond to that, and then Y, Y, Y corresponded to these three. Okay, OTSB awards. So if you look at that report we run, so this one here, the first part of it is, uh, these look like OTSB awards that should be SB awards. We just went through that one with, uh, with one example, era helicopters look like, yeah, it's a mismatch, but that one looks okay. It also happens in the reverse. Okay, this one is, an, uh, this award is a small business in FPDSNG, but this vendor's current SAM record shows that they're not an OTSB for that NAICS code. So it happens both ways. But I think as we talked about, and, and it's confirming my suspicion, it's much more common to go the other way, not much more, significantly more common that an OTSB award is incorrectly coded and it should be an SB than the other way around, but it does happen. So my the point being, you should really, if you looked at the top 10 miscodes one way, you should look at the top 10 the other way. Um, to me, that would be the the best way to make sure that your metrics are, re are accurately reflecting your efforts. Okay, uh, how about this? I don't know why I'm not getting these up here, but I will have to code these in here. FPDSNG, we will look at this. So here's an award uh, in FY20. This is an FY20 award. Who's the vendor? General Electric. Small business. Nope. Let's take a look at another one. International Business Machines, IBM, FY20 award, small business. Okay, and then you do hear the argument, the idea that uh, General Electric or IBM could be a small business for some NAICS codes is preposterous. That's my, that's my description, people are free to, you know, that's, what can I say? That's how I view it. And there is a, a famous lawsuit against the SBA to stop de de deceptive practices for reaching compliance. And you can read it. It's all about people going into FPDS and G. They search for General Electric. And they go, oh, that's how Smithsonian, if I'm not, I'm, again, we've, I, I'm, I'm picking, the, I pick these at random. As I just look for look for examples. Uh, I say, ah, oh, that's how Smithsonian is making their small business goals. They're making small business awards to IBM. Okay, well, we've just shown that it's mostly you get hurt the other way. But uh, it does happen the other way, and people get upset about it. So uh, we include both in the report. Suspicions both ways. Okay, any uh, any other comments so far? Uh, that was kind of the big one there. And uh, if you're close to that line, boy, it sure would be, we sure hope you take a look at it because based on everything we've heard so far today and based on everything we're seeing, uh, you, you probably can legitimately just get over that line. You're not gonna be able to make up five, 10 percentage points uh, unless there's something Although I've seen some huge awards that were miscoded, huge. All right. Now here's the here's the biggest one. Here's the one. Here's the metric that agencies hurt themselves the most on, and that is on competition rate. I, I'm, 
it's you know I look back in some of some of my records and I'm saying the average is five percentage points undercounted. So if your agency is at 75 percent, if you if you look through these top miscodings, you could well get up to 80. Okay, let's take a look at it. Competed awards. And well, I'm actually going to pick out pick out one. Uh, let's pick out this one. All right, it's a it's a three hundred thousand dollar award, so you know. Pretty good chunk of change. It's a definitive contract. Let's come down to the competition section. And they're putting uh, not available for competition. But the number of offers is five. I know since this is an SBR. So that's why we question this. If this was not available for competition, how did what happened with these five offers? Where do they come from? I, th I have a thought. Go ahead. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna be ashamed. You even welcome me back today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, on on that particular one, I would say that the um, the five was for the original award because this is a follow on. So technically, follow ons you're not competing a follow on because you're giving it directly to the same person because you're doing the same work. It's just a, it's a continuation of the same award. So there shouldn't oh, be, I see. yeah, there shouldn't be any offers received technically. <laughs> there no, but, be, that's, I'm sorry. that's how, I mean, I'm thinking that they're coding it, that five, were, five offers were received from the original award, not this particular award, because obviously you're not going to compete a follow on. You're going to go, to the follow on of the award. That's how our our CEOs see it in in our in Bo Bessie and Boehm. But you could this is Melinda again from NIH, but you could also look at it even though it's a follow on to a previously competed contract. If they, if it's over a certain dollar amount, it still has to be synopsized. This could be the number of offers that they received in response to that sole source solicitation. Agreed. Yeah, so I guess I, I, you, I, could, you could see it. You could look at it both ways, but it's it's either the total number of offers that they received from the original contract. But the way I would look at it would be the number of offers received against that sole source solicitation and and contract opportunities. But if you're sole sourcing, though, because they have it here, the solicitation procedure says sole source only one, which means you're not competing it. Exactly. But I so, but those businesses are out there, even though it's sole source, they're still submitting those proposals. Huh. I mean, that's just, that's, as an 1102 a long time ago, that's always been my experience. Even though it was sole source, we still got information, proposals, proposals because wow. they are saying, look, I can provide this. This is what I can do for you. So whether it was small or large, they were still submitting those Right, but those it, proposals. But it wasn't it wasn't sent out for offers to come in. It was sent out. It was synopsized, right? Just to say this is what we're doing. It was exactly. a, you know, a knack, an acknowledgement. So technically, I I mean I was a CO too, and and I can see your side of it. But yeah. it makes it easier that if you're talking about this particular record we're looking at, I would I would venture to put zero or one. That's how we would code it. But I think I think throughout the government that all the agencies kind of take the FPDSNG data dictionary and and look at it in their own terms because I know that even within DOI um, some of our COs fill it out in a different way you know the the thought process is a little different yeah and it's you know? all and it's all one's interpretation of how like, they're reading yeah. it. It's kind of like the FAR. It's yeah exactly the FAR. It's, <laughs> it's, it's an interpretation of how one is looking at it. Okay. So there you go, Bob. Well, that's good. <laughs> Different answers. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't fully understand your responses. I hope everyone else did. Um, 
Uh, just that, that not obviously. Uh, I don't do uh, procurement. I do look at the number. Um, one thing I would point out that this was a definitive contract, so it wasn't, uh, you know, a delivery order. You know, one delivery order following a different delivery order. But I, I, I think I got the general point, which was, boy, you could say, hey, look, we, we're putting down a notice here. Uh, we only have one one vendor for this, and we're going to make a sole source award to them. And then three people respond and say, hey, wait a minute. Why are you doing that? We can do that. that I think is what you were saying, what, that uh, other person in on that conversation. Sorry, I missed your, your Melinda. Name. Yes, Melinda. that's what I was saying. Right. So that's a good point. So uh, this isn't as clear cut as uh, – Maybe we were thinking, but uh, hopefully if you see one of these, it is odd. Uh, if you get a big one, maybe you can check. The, it would be advisable to check the contract file to see if something was off in here. Uh, yeah, I I don't understand what, what that was. This looks like it was some sort of 8A award when I looked at that far. But All right, let me move on, and I will come to a different uh, – uh, let's see if I can come to, a, to another one. And uh, here's one here. Now, talking about these brand names, that, that that's a wrinkle on this. When you get more than one offer, and it should be coded as not competed. And I think this is the one I have here. Yes. Okay, so here's a... It's not a very big award, but it was labor FY20. If I come down to the number of offers, I got three. Wow, great. I competed this one. But they have it as uh, they don't. And th this is a this is a delivery order task order. So for this to count as competed, I got to see one of three values here. Fair opportunity given competitive set aside or it could be blank if it's in, if it's not one of those three and it's a delivery order or bpa call it goes into the not competed column so it's not fair opportunity given it's not competitive set aside in here it's not blank bingo not competed award i think it's marked wrong myself because if it's written off a gsa contract it has it should say fair opportunity given well, here's why I think it's right, <laughs> and you can tell me other people can weigh in. So mm -hmm. another thing that uh, weighs that it was competed was three offers, three people bid, but here's what they got up here. Dell brand IT hardware. So they put a brand name description in there, brand name exclusion, and it wasn't brand name or equivalent. It was brand name. Right. Well, there there are a lot of small businesses and businesses on GSA that are resellers for Dell. <clears throat> so, yep. I mean, they could have gotten three offers from three different resellers from Dell. Correct. But it, it shouldn't have had, it should have had fair opportunity given because it is on the GSA and that it, it's been competed through GSA already. Okay. Uh, well, Teresa, I have an appendix A here <laughs> that people can read. And I'm going to, I'm going to, with the FAR references, and this is actually through the SEC that says that if you put a brand name exclusion on there, you got to code it as not competed. It doesn't matter how many offers you receive. So I don't, I want to keep moving because we're a little bit beyond here. But uh, the point I was making was that uh, brand names, uh, that's, you know, and this actually came up at DHS when I was there, a senior executive. You, you told me the story that, you know, he would put out solicitations for Oracle. I think it was Oracle, you know, CALS, uh, Oracle licensing. And, you know, you could get a bid from CDW and Mystic and maybe some others. And then uh, IBM and Microsoft would come along and say, well, how is this competed? We – we're not even eligible. You put a restriction that it's only Oracle. That's not competed. So uh, Appendix A, uh, I'm, uh, we're taking the position that if you, not brand name or equivalent, you put a brand name period, you got to code it as not competed. But, Teresa, your points, I understand. You can, let's keep moving, though. 
Um, we're run, start, as always, I start running out of time. Here's a big one. This fair opportunity, this follow on action following competitive initial action. 99% of the time it's wrong. That's my statement. I, and I've had people say it's always wrong, but let's go with 99%. Let's take a look at this one. Nice chunk of award here. Wow, 34 million BAOV, 4 million on this obligation. I'm going to come down to the number of offers, three, three offers. What do they put in the fair opportunity limited sources? Follow on action, following competitive initial action. That's wrong. Hey, sorry, Bob. You sure? Yep. We can't see your screen. At least I can't see uh, it anymore. Sorry. <laughs> dang it. Let me do it again. Thank you. All right, here we go. Uh, I just went through this one here. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, Deloitte, nice, good size award, good chunk there. And this is a small agency, a member of the Small Agency Council. I come down to the competition section, three, uh, three offers, four offers on the IDV, multiple award IDV. They got three orders on the delivery order. And they put fair opportunity, follow on action, following competitive initial action. That's wrong. No way I'm going to say on that one. I'm being uh, maybe being a little emphatic on that. But um, again, if you put fair, it's got to be fair opportunity, CSA, or blank. Other than that, you're saying we did not compete it. You had three offers. And what in the definition of a follow on action, you could we can look at it here. this guy up uh 16 five you know it's it's a sole source award made to an incumbent vendor uh, it's hard to find 16 505 b b two i 65 b two Where's I? I don't have an I. Ah. Here it is. It's, here's a good description of it. The order must be issued on a sole source basis. How did you get three offers? In the interest, uh, uh, yes. The order must be issued on a sole source basis in the interest of economy and efficiency because it is a logical follow on to an order already issued under the contract. Any comments on that one that that guy was wrong? So if you see so if you see fair opportunity limited sources and you got more than one offer in there that you know you can see some legitimate ones too but 99% of the time so here's one that you know a lot of these have one offer. So maybe, but we sure we sure see these things. People don't don't understand what they're putting on that one. And that's how you get that huge undercounting of the competition. All right. Uh, so and oh and by the way, so here at the top of this report, we say look here's if you look at the top 20 transactions. Here's your current competition rate, 80.9. If all of these things, in fact, are wrong, you would jump up to 82. So more than a percentage point just on those 20. So we show you what impact these suspicious, alleged, maybe wrong, uh, wrong things are costing you. Okay, the last one, this is the, and this one is our, is the weakest one what we're saying here is is if you put in a delivery order or bpa call against a multiple award federal supply schedule gwac or part a bpa maybe you actually did get more than one offer even though it says one that's just you know this is really 
shooting from the hip on this one. If you're competitive one bid, if you're just under the threshold, check a couple of them. So here's one that I, I think looks suspicious. Center for Disease Control, good size award. What's it for? All right, first of all, it is against a, that's either a federal supply schedule or a GWAC. Well, let's take a look at what it is. Federal supply schedule. Is for temporary help services. So you got a $15 million award for temporary help services. And you got one offer. Wow. I don't know about that. Seems like if you put out a solicitation for 15 million for temporary help, uh, there's got to be more than one. That would have caught someone else's eye more than one one vendor. Sure seems to me. Check the check the contract file. Make sure that uh, he, uh, one just wasn't put in by mistake. Any comments on that one? Now you know now if it's a marine engineering. Uh, for offshore drilling, uh, you know, in the Bering Sea. Okay, well, in my in my mind, well, maybe. I, I agree with you. You have to look at what the actual um, sow or sue would be, because right. down there it says N Z something, uh, N C E Z I D. I don't right. even know what that means. <laughs> so it, entry screening services. So it could be very specialized. <laughs> could have been. You're right. <laughs> What was this one? Here's another one I thought was. This is even bigger, 149, 150 million against a that looks like a federal supply schedule. Could be a GWAC, I guess. Why don't we take a look? Federal supply schedule. What are these people doing? OHS monitoring services. Eh? Maybe that's. Maybe that's okay. What, what caught my eye here was that support professional other. That's a pretty, that's a generic PSC code. Administrative management, one offer. Wow. Competed in one offer. Full and open. 150 million bucks. Eh, wow. That's odd. Maybe. But we have seen a lot of cases where someone just left that in by default. You know, a lot, it, it comes up. Okay, in review, I would say start, you know, when you run this report, <clears throat> here I am back again, I go to interior, here, Top procurement X, Teresa, you, you get no good deed goes unpunished. So we will take a look at uh, Bessie and Boehm. I would, <laughs> I would recommend doing the top 10. Start small. It'll apply. Since you're going to do the report, can you just send me the report you got? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Again, you know, we're not saying someone did something wrong. If you send this out to your 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 folks, please make a note of that because they, they're apt to say, oh, quit bothering me. Why is this wrong? Um, uh, if you if you would like us to work with you, Rachel Hyde is standing by. She could walk through this with you, run the report for you, email it to you. Non Fed data, non -fed data check subscriber. Uh, Brian Yost, and there's a four-month trial. I'll say that. You could always try us for four months at a nominal cost. There's that discussion on brand names. Went through that extensively, and SEC looked at it hard, as did VA. Well, still running. You got to be a little patient with this one. Not Bob. There's us. Yep. I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you have um, did, did Potomac Wave do a training for brand name at one point or will you be doing one if you haven't already? 
Mm. We have not done one on brand name. It's come up in our competition. Because that would be a really good um, webinar. Okay. Because I think a lot of people don't really fully understand when to use it or how to use it. All right. Okay. Good suggestion. And there is that clause. You know, I'm not referring to that brand name or equivalent. Where was that? There's that clause, brand name or equivalent. It's far uh, 52 something, obviously. Yeah, that's what we, that's what our CEOs use a lot if they have right. to do the brand name. Right. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Thank you. I'd have to get someone else on who has some certifications in the, uh, hopefully I have someone in mind too. Uh, okay, there we are. Um, Fed data checks, 14 subscribers now. I mention this every time. We're the NOAA Small Business of the Year. Uh, that was quite a thrill for us. Um, we're doing a lot with Section 889 of the NDA. Hey, that's the prohibited telecommunications equipment. If that comes up, we got reports and alerts on that. All right, that's it. I kept uh, everyone a little bit over. Uh, Teresa, I'm not seeing much on the small business. Looks like on the one hand, it's good. You got uh, apparently great data quality. On the other hand, I'm not seeing, I, I'm going the small business would be squeezing blood from a stone, but I'll send it to you. Hey, that's it. Any final comments, everyone? I, it seems like this team's went well. Um, uh, you have, you know. Uh, Bob, are you be able yep. to send the PowerPoint presentation out as well? Yep. Okay, yep. thank you. If you could um, put your email in that chat, put your email in the chat. Oh, it's not like GoToWebinar where we record it. So put your email in there. We'll send you the PowerPoint deck. Uh, or email me, Bob Harford at feddatacheck.com. Any final comments? I'm running a little over. That's par for the course, unfortunately. Hey, thanks, everybody. That was great. Great discussion. I appreciate everyone's input, uh, uh, particularly all those we heard from uh, Teresa and NIH and other ones. That that was just what we're hoping for. Thanks yeah, a lot. This this was great, Bob. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. See you. Thanks, Bob. Bye. Take care.